Okay, this is just a quick video. I am currently in Texas. I can't stand flies and they're everywhere. I've been here for five hours recording and uploading the movie War Games. It's on my BitChute channel and it's on my Rumble channel. I'll leave links below. My fellow Americans, it is undeniable that this past election was stolen to all those members of the armed forces, join with us to defend our liberty and land. Seated around this room is an incredible diversity of professional experience spanning the last five I Tried to upload it to Richie from Boston TV, but sadly, my Starlink is in a dumpster in Missouri and I'm using a Glocal Me, which still, still gets it done, still gets it done. And I'm waiting on a Starlink Mini. And that really bums me out because I donated two Starlinks to people out in Tennessee. And uh, I hope they work because mine didn't, which is, it is what it is. What are you gonna do? At any rate, <clears throat> links will be below. And let me just remind you, people in North Carolina have been joined by people in New Mexico. New Mexico just got hit with a very Hurricane Helene type storm. And let's not forget that Wyoming is completely on fire. Things you won't find on the news. Don't forget about these people and don't trust what the news tells you ever. The movie War Games was put out by the Pentagon and it's a movie, but everybody that stars in it are actual General Wesley Clark, Secret Service, governors. It's basically a thinly veiled threat to when I told you about the Department of Defense putting out a new directive on the 27th of this of September 2024 they basically it all makes sense now so you're really going to want to watch this because it took me a long time to do it at any rate let's not forget the people in North Carolina shall we on that Wednesday night before the flood we had went to church and uh, Steve and our son and his wife Elena and their eight-year-old daughter had come to church and uh, when we got ready to leave little Bridget wanted to come and go home with us and we tried to get Stephen and Elena to come but they said they were going to go back home and uh, as the river came down the water got more intense and whatever and where they live beside the river at relief it just came down all at once and took them. Stephen was found in Irwin, Tennessee, and we have done, done the funeral for him, and Lena is still not found. Little Bridget is eight year old, and uh, she'll be staying with us, and the other grandparents is gonna, we're all gonna work together and make for sure that she's well taken care of. So even though we've lost a son, we have the hope of going to be with him one day. And proud of my son and proud of my whole family. It is unimaginable the way that our community and fire departments and different organizations done for us far and above that we could even imagine. It's just been overwhelming the way that people has helped and done and wanting to help. And we just thank each and everybody that's done anything for us. With all of our heart, we pray and ask God that he would bless you as you've blessed us.
friends, I'm about to compare Hurricane Helene to the massive flooding going on in New Mexico. This is insane. First off, we gotta get this out of the way. We know weather modification is just a theory. We are just spitballing here. But I wanna show you something that has to do with the flooding that has taken place in New Mexico. And I'm gonna show you an example where you can literally see weather being created over Area 51. It then gets shot with radar beams and then turns into a storm a few hundred miles in size. And you see it flow right through Arizona and into New Mexico. My friends, check this out. All right, in order to start understanding how this compares to Hurricane Helene and why this flooding was so bad, all you need to do is look at the last couple days. And what you're seeing is a low pressure system right here, literally spinning counterclockwise for multiple days in the same spot. It does not move. This alone is very rare to have a stalled out system just sitting for days, specifically in the southwest of the United States. And as we move to current time, we can see this basically just lifted off that area. And people are wondering why this flood took place. But what they don't understand is how rare of a situation it is and how close this was to exactly what happened with Hurricane Helene. And I'm going to explain that right now. All right, and here we are. So what we're looking for is another stalled out low pressure system. We can see it right here. This came down from Canada as Hurricane Helene was approaching the west coast of Florida. And it just sat there. And what happened was is the hurricane eventually made landfall and then swung up towards that low pressure system. And once they get close enough, they begin to interact. We call this the Fujiwara effect. And as you can see, that stalled out low pressure system completely affects Hurricane Helene and makes it bend into the west. And that's what puts this storm in North Carolina, Asheville, and the severe flooding we saw in Tennessee and western North Carolina. Again, my friends, this would not have happened if this low pressure system was not stalled out and kept in the middle of the United States right here. It's as if this thing was sitting here waiting to interact with the hurricane for it then to cause the hurricane to shoot in a western direction after making landfall. This is super rare for this to happen. But there it is, my friends. So somehow, some way, these low pressure systems are being put in place. And now when we jump back to the New Mexico situation, you can see we are dealing with the same exact situation. A low pressure system stalled out, not moving an inch right or left. Super, super rare for these to just stay in one spot. And then there came the moisture right there. So you see this red. That is eventually after a day of this spinning here, it's pulling up that moisture from the Pacific over Mexico and then boom, explodes into Roswell, New Mexico. And that, my friends, is why I'm showing you how a lot of this can originate from places like Area 51, where there's no eyes seeing anything that's going on in the skies there. We had something being dropped in the sky and then it was activated by those radar and then eventually became a massive storm that was flowing across Arizona and right into New Mexico. All right, and just take a look at them right next to each other. Two different major weather situations causing devastating flooding, both of which were caused by a stalled out low pressure system that's already a rare situation on its own. And then it is then activated to then cause this flooding because these systems did not move. They just stayed over the same place, dumping feet of rain, and in turn, my friends, becomes another devastating flood. All right, so now I have this full clip that we can break down and you might be able to understand a little bit more. So this is what's happening here. We have a radar anomaly popping up. And as you can see, this is taking place directly over Area 51. So that's where this is originating from. These dots are being dropped over Area 51 and then shot with these lasers. And just to get everyone oriented, you can see right here, it is directly over Area 51. This is not made up. This is actually being dropped over that private property. And now we're going to go into detail and watch how they enhance it in real time. We're going to be watching this little speckle anomaly and you're going to see it get zapped two different times. I'm going to go ahead and hit play and you're going to see two zaps hit it and just as that happens another part of this begins to peel off. Watch this. One, two. And as soon as that happens this part peels right off. Let's backtrack and you're going to see the two beams. Here is one right there. There is the second right there and then watch as this little system here gets bigger with a piece of it trailing off right after the beams hit it. This is unbelievable stuff and you can see that it's also being shot from different radar towers as it scoots across the states here. Now keep in mind how big this is. This is an entire state right here. This is Nevada. Let's backtrack and see how big this thing gets over time. It begins as just these little dots. It gets hit with that double zap and then here we go. Watch how this thing changes. Watch how fast it's moving and you can see it being hit all the way back and forth. So let's do it again. All the way back to the beginning. We'll start with the first beam right here and the creation 
of these little specks. There was absolutely no moisture or any weather in this area whatsoever. Keep in mind, this is Nevada in Southern California. And we move forward again, zap number one. There is zap number two. We begin the peel off phase and then it just begins to get bigger and bigger. And you can see other towers hitting it from different places as it passes by. Just a very weird anomaly that I caught and it seemingly shows a system being created from nothing. Watch, if we backtrack another frame, this thing disappears. There's nothing there. The very next frame, we get the dots and the first beam, and then we see it get hit and hit over and over again, even from down in this area, and then boom, we have a full-fledged weather system created from little specks over Area 51. My friends are learning that scientists and researchers are looking at how to change the weather on purpose. That's right. Lasers now could one day manipulate rain and lightning. CBS This Morning contributor Michio Kaku is a physics professor at City College of New York. Professor, nice to see you. Extraordinary seeing Al Gore and Bill Clinton there together with Charlie, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah they did not get into this discussion, no. though. <laughs> but it is fascinating. I mean, lasers, really, to change the weather? That's right. Well, as Mark Twain once famously said, everyone complains about the weather, but no one ever does anything about it. Well, instead of doing a rain dance, we physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. Let's do it again. All the way back to the beginning, we'll start with the first beam right here and the creation of these little specks. We physicists are firing trillion watt lasers into the sky to actually precipitate rain clouds and actually bring down lightning bolts. Them being created from nothing. Watch, if we backtrack another frame, this thing disappears. There's nothing there. The very next frame, we get the dots and the first beam, and then we see it get hit and hit over and over again, even from things. This is potentially a game changer. But this is experimental. It's experimental. However, in the laboratory so far, it works. When you have water vapor and you have dust particles or ice crystals, you can precipitate the rain. It condenses around the seeds. These seeds can also be created by laser beams. By firing truly watt lasers, you rip apart the electrons, creating what are called ions. And these ions act like seeds, like dust particles, bringing down rain and even lightning. So once again, I'm going to show you the list of hundreds of patents going back to 1891, all the way up to modern day on weaponizing and owning the weather. Okay? After the last video I did, I, I had posted the United States Air Force 1997 document called Owning the Weather by 2025. And mysteriously, that document that's been on the internet for 20 years has disappeared. This is what happens when you try to open it. It's just doing nothing. And it goes nowhere. But it is what it is. At any rate. Links will be below. Understand what's going on. Don't fall for the hype. At any rate, Richie from Boston. Links to my bit shoot and rumble will be in the description below as well as into thin airs. And meanwhile, I'm still waiting for the uh, owning the weather by 2025 to open and it's, uh, it's not doing anything. Because much like the Wayback Machine, it's been altered. It's amazing that right after Joe Biden comes out and says, we don't own the weather, we don't do that, the very next day the Wayback Machine gets hacked and documents like this that have been on the internet for years are gone. I'm out.